All right, so we are back for another episode of the Archery Coach Cast. I am here with um, our trusty USA Archery Coaches, Linda Beck and Larry Wise. Um, myself, Frank McDonough. I am your, I hate calling myself a host, more of a facilitator of this discussion um, because we like to just talk about everything and anything archery specifically archery coaching and shot process oriented and doing what we need to do to teach others how to shoot better that's what we do that's what we love to do um again make sure you guys for those of you that are logging in now watching it live if you want to come back and rewatch it those of you that maybe um see a, a snippet of it later you can watch these on our youtube page the video version what we got here and then you can also watch the international archery institute um the archery coach cast on all of your podcast flat platforms to listen to the audio version as well um just a reminder to check our facebook page and our website um www.virtualuniversityofarchery.com uh, uh, on, on online for our courses and updates there especially our facebook page because pretty much everything's through there or on my personal um instagram page i post a lot of that so um but anyways so welcome linda how are you you good good how are you doing i'm good larry how are you i'm doing okay doing okay just yep. okay. sorting out these <laughs> the files on your computer <laughs> uh yeah i don't uh, yeah ah I technology hope it, I hope email address works technology hey um larry let's do you have that bow close by let's see that let's see the paint job on that bow. grab that quick i think i think people will enjoy that beautiful paint job on that pse let's see that bad boy look at that Linda, look at that pretty red, white, and blue bow he's got there. Oh, it's no, it's orange and yellow and purple. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a little yellow in there, it's isn't got there? Some no. yellow in it. Yeah, that's my it's skittles red, white, bow. Blue first, it still looks pretty awesome. I have to admit. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. I have to show him how to shoot that, Linda. He he said he said he shot his best 15 arrows ever. <laughs> Uh, no, but not with that bow. With the that's a forty-inch focus. I've shot the best with uh, the thirty-seven. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the best for yeah a while. You know what it is? <laughs> it's all this talk about all of this stuff that we're doing the last few weeks. It's it's making you pay a little bit more attention to what you're doing. That's what it is. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe relearning. Relearning old stuff. Yeah. As right. I've done many always times. <laughs> always learning. We are always learning, aren't we? So today's part of that learning, I guess. We're a little segue there into what we're talking about. Where today is the hook and grip. So it's kind of that next step in the shot process. The stuff that we've been we've been hammering out a little series on the shot process for all of archery. It's not, you know, not just compound, not just Olympic, not just barebow most people that follow me or know me know me because of the barebow world but we fact is is as coaches we've probably shot it all in some capacity um so where do you want to start larry you want to start on on just the the setting talking about the process um, of setting well, hook and grip my mentor and became a great friend bud folks our former Olympic coach from, well, I think he was Olympic coach in the 70s. Um, yeah, Bud was a mentor, um, got to know him quite well, but he always said that the shot begins and ends with the bow hand. That's the first part of your body that you place on the bow. And it's the last part of your body still touching the bow as the arrow crosses the rest. So you better get it right. <laughs> so that's a place to start. That's a, uh, I like that explanation. I don't, yeah. 
I don't think I've ever heard it explained that way. It makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, begins and ends there. And all the, and everything in between, the hand is on the bow. Right. Right. So, uh, yeah, set it uh, properly, set it properly, and you won't have to change it. So you place it on the bow correctly in the proper position with the, the proper part of your thumb pad touching the grip section. And after that, maintain it. Right. Um, it's really a pretty simple concept, but doing it <laughs> with these is, is tough because yeah. of how we use our hand for everything else that we do, right? We, everything else that we come in contact with, we manipulate and control with our hands. And now with the bow, uh, we have to mate with it, not in a controlling manner, but just to engage with it in such a way that the bow can do what it's supposed to do in other words, we shouldn't screw it up <laughs> because that's what we end up doing with with the bow hand. Uh, yeah. Right. So, so we have to do that in, our, in the most repeatable manner possible mm -hmm. while finding the position that has the least amount of effect on the bow. Right. Yeah. So we, we have to... A blend with the bow it, it's an equal partner and if we do uh, we get better results if we try to control it we get a lesson <laughs> it, it becomes the teacher let me get a piece of tape go ahead linda how about you how do you what what's your uh, so so the keys is like larry said and i'm sure most everybody on this call is heard about what a proper grip is and positioning and the you know 45 degree angle and everything but as a coach some of the things that you really need to look at and that I correct all the time so in the recurve world it's very common to take your wooden grip and build it up such that it matches your hands angle what angle you like to have mm -hmm. and the thumb pad area. And then you can look at um, Jaeger has all kinds of aftermarket grips in all kinds of configurations to really get a grip that matches you. When it comes to the compound world, and I don't have a compound bow here, I just have a recurve bow. But in the compound world, pretty much however that riser is machined is it. But there are getting to be more and more aftermarket grips. And then, of course, the Hoyt system has the inserts. And now there's six different inserts, three different angles and two different parts here. So one of the things to look for as a coach is when your athlete puts their hand in the grip, are they, in fact, I need to go down. Are they, in fact, getting the meaty part of the thumb touching? Yeah. And you will be surprised if you watch as to how many at full draw are not. Yeah. That they put it in and then when they get to full draw, they lift it off. A uh, little coaching tip for those that lift off, take a little piece of the D loop material or it could be a piece of yarn or even I did this the other day with a child with a dollar bill. They were thrilled because they got to keep the dollar bill. <laughs> and we just put the corner of that bill, just barely the corner down here. So that if they lift off at any time prior to the arrow leaving the bow, because it, it. when that bow leaves upon shooting, that's when whatever you put under here should fall. Yeah. So if it drops any time sooner, mm -hmm. they've changed. Oh, that's such a good tip. And I did that yep. with her and I told her, I said, okay, if, if, if you drop that dollar bill, it's mine. So well, she dropped it the first time. <laughs> and I said, I'll give you a second try. And oh, she didn't drop it then. That is that's such a good thing. tip, especially good for tip younger there. But my other point is watch because what ends up happening, and in my experience, the Matthews bows are very vertical, forcing yeah. a child, an archer to really break their wrist back. Yeah. And that is very uncomfortable for many. That's why I like Hoyt, 
uh, Bowtech now has inserts so that you can get the angle that you mm -hmm. is you. Right. So I, I'm always having archers, if they have a Hoyt bow, telling them, okay, you're not touching, go to the next one and find the one that you're able to have your hand in a position and touch the most critical part, the heel of that hand in the bow. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of my Matthews ones go to the ultra, uh, the ultra view and the aftermarket grips there. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind that it's to make them force their hand to the bow is not good either. So find mm -hmm. a grip that is them so they can get that proper contact. And it'll make all the difference in the world in their scores. Right. So I don't know if you got those pictures, but- I'll pull them up, but yeah, go ahead. You, you do that a while. Yeah, this, this is the section to use for the hand. So um, what you can do with a student then is put a piece of tape on their hand like this and guide them to put the tape on the bow grip, All right? So uh, that means the lifeline here is the boundary. Every, th every part of the thumb over here on the thumb pad is for archery. This part of the hand right here is for golf because that's how we grip the golf club, but we're not gripping the bow. We're simply placing our thumb pad and, and there's nothing magic about the thumb pad, except that it lies in front of, it's positioned in front of the radius bone in your arm. So we're really lining up the radius bone to resist the force of the bow. All right. and, and of course, Linda makes the good point everybody's hand, wrist, arm is shaped a little bit different. And so we have to make some adaptations. So, you know, everybody's adapting. Uh, some people are in wheelchairs and have to adapt. That's more dramatic, but um, we're still, every one of us uh, has to adapt with our own body, what we're given and make it fit on the boat. Yeah, Larry, those, just so you know, Larry, those pictures did not come through yet. Um, unless you sent them to me on Facebook. Did you do that? No. no. All right. Yeah, I don't no. know. They didn't, they did not. Okay. Come through. Just like this. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I think you so I'll add to what Larry, when Larry had his hand up and uh, where the piece of tape is, another thing you can do is once they're in that position, on this side, when you're in there the right way, this is a straight line. So I will draw a straight line on this side. That way, when they put their hand in, they can see if that line is straight mm -hmm. or are they turning one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And then they can have that reference when they put their bow hand in because they're looking, of course, at this side. Right. That's a good tool. That's a great coaching tool. Yeah. Well, it's several ways to bring awareness to the student. Sure. You, you can describe it in all kinds of words. You can demonstrate it, but, uh, you know, using the dollar bill trick, that gives students immediate awareness. Just like setting a cup of water on their head yep. to teach them awareness of their head position while they're shooting. Yeah, brings awareness. Yeah, I use that one a lot. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, so we sort of jumped right into grip. Ironically, we did it before talking about the release hand and the hook. Mm -hmm. However, in the steps of our shot process, we have to do one before the other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, according to NTS, which we all train um, and coach others in, talk about setting the hook first. Now, there's some nuances to that. And that's the hook and or Olympic hook, barebow hook or release hook. It doesn't matter. But there is some nuances to that between mm -hmm. your setting your hook on your string and how you have to react or manipulate with the release. So, Larry, 
let's let's go let's kind of go back to that step in the process of we're setting the hook why don't, why don't you touch upon the release hand um linda why don't you talk about the recurve hook um and then okay. it's, then its relationship to mm -hmm. setting the grip okay so with the release aid you've uh, set your stance you've knocked the arrow and so now you have your release aid in your hand and you hook it to the d-loop all right, so that comes first. But the release hand is not finished. Now you're, you're supporting the weight of the bow through the release aid on that hook while you then set the bow hand. And you set it, you know, on this line, knuckles are at a 45 degree angle, finger and thumb is relaxed. Okay. Then you finish release hand. And so that's where we need the, the three finger hook, pinky and thumb relaxed and flat knuckles, straight wrist. Why is that? Why flat knuckles and straight wrist? Uh, okay, so there's, this is because of our anatomy and how things are attached. Um, you know, when, when you wiggle your little finger, it's not just isolated to this area. Right. There are anatomy links or anatomy trains where this is all hooked together up the inside of your arm and into your chest. So if you're using your little finger, you're connecting to the chest and contracting the major pectoral, yeah, muscle here in the front, yeah. okay? And with the thumb, it also is linked up the inside of the arm to the pectoralis minor. And so both of those link to the chest, which is not obvious when, when you, uh, you know, start studying anatomy, uh, but there are books available, uh, one by, uh, one called Anatomy Trains, where you can see all of this. It's all uh, diagram. Okay. So the hook is with these three fingers or just two. Okay. Uh, also, flat knuckles, so that you're not uh, tightening the forearm. So if you have a fisting motion, then you're tightening this muscle. Yep. And if you're tightening this muscle and keeping it tight, then you're not transferring holding into the back, which we said in previous sessions is the most important action that you do, getting that holding into your back and, and using it. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, and so the idea being in kind of all of the NTS, and I've said this before talking about target panic and some other things, there's good tension and bad tension in the archery shot. The, the idea of making that fist tightening here, putting uh, undue tension somewhere in the, in the thumb, the pinky, you're, you're, that's bad tension. That's tension that's taking away from your ability to hold into your back. Well, we're uh, with the ultimate goal of being 100%, holding it 100% of your back, in your back while at full draw, um, and that's that's really it's the idea of repeatability. What's going to be more repeatable? Creating the same amount of tension in something like that, or not having any 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 tension at all. What's going to be more repeatable? Well, no tension. Removing as much of that extra tension is going to be the most repeatable process. But it's good. All right, um, Linda. I think uh, I think we covered the release pretty well. How about uh, you give us your feedback on if you want to touch anything on the release hand? By no, all no, means, that's, that's just, Larry got that covered pretty well. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the recurve hook. So the recurve hook, you're going to, of course, hook first. So the bow is kind of 
dangling. And then that allows you to really set the grip. But on the recurve hook itself, for the three fingers, you want to be you want to be kind of I'm left-handed archer, so you want to be just in front of the joint on the first one, just behind the joint on the second one, and then it's going to be the finger pad on the third one. And when you initially hook, you kind of want to roll your fingers on because that's going to push the blood back and you will be less prone to blood uh, blisters and things. You want the back of the hand to be flat, just like what was described on the release. The back of the hand is going to be flat. And the wrist is going to be worst case straight, but we actually want it bowed out a little bit because when your arm is hanging from your side, there's a little bit of bow to it. Yeah. And to help maintain that bow, you can pull your thumb and little finger back. Kind of like you're cradling a ball in here. Yeah. And it can look like a C or a reverse C, depending on what handed you are. And you're going to maintain that position. So when you hook on, you're going to roll on first finger and you want your fingertips. I just did that. My fingertips were pointed down. Get your fingertips pointed upward. With the niche most pressure on the first one. And then second and the least on the third at this position. As you draw, the pressure is going to shift to be more on the second finger due to the angle. But you want most of the pressure on the index finger at this point, kind of back to what Larry was talking about with the thumb and little finger. If you contract these, you end up contracting muscles in here we don't want. And our national head coach, Kisik Lee, has said this more than once. There's a connection from the index finger all the way around to your back. Mm -hmm. And when I did a level three, there was a level two, there was an MD in my class. And he had me do this little experiment. So if you, I'm going to have my hand raised, but if you had your arm down, if you just have your hand out and just curl up your index finger, pay attention to what you feel going through your forearm and your bicep. And if you really pay attention, you can feel it in your back. Now just let the first one index stay relaxed and bring up the others. And you'll find that these die in the forearm. And the guy who was an MD said, that's exactly right. These fingers are all wired differently than this one. So that index finger is key. So when you initially hook the string, most of the pressure is on the index finger. And then as the angle changes, the pressure shifts. And also looking at it as a coach, you should see a stair step progression at full draw. And you should never, you should not see the fingernails of these two fingers, but you might see the fingernail of the third one at full draw. So once you set the hook, you maintain it. Maintain the wrist, the whole structure. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Linda's, of course, describing the recurve and recurvers are holding peak weight. Yeah. So how you use your hand is, is again, critical. Uh, and you got to keep that solid, hard hook. You can't have half a hook. Because if you have only, if you only commit halfway on your hook, how will you ever get through the clicker? And now your fingers will be letting go as you're trying to contract and expand and you'll never get through the clicker. Yeah. You know, what I see in barebow and just the comment in regards to the changes that we see in, in the recurve hook with barebow, there are changes. There's changes because we don't hold as much weight. We have to string, string walk for different distances and we hit our nose. A lot of times we hit our nose the shallower your hook is and the big, depending on the size of your nose, you could be smacking your nose every single time. Um, you know, John Demmer sort of made the nose tape a famous thing. If everybody remembers, there was even Superman nose tape, I think available on Lancaster archery still, um, <laughs> you know, and it depends on what your anchor is. You see, you know, the barebow world is definitely a little bit of, um, uh, um, there's a little bit of variable there because everybody does a little different. You know, for me, the the NTS hook as per 
what coach Lee teaches doesn't work for me for bear bow. I have to go a little deeper. Um, it's just, it's just the way I am, the way my fingers are. I couldn't emphasize more like what coach Linda said about having the fingers up. Um, that's a huge factor. I know when I start tapping my nose that I start changing my hook and I'm getting lazy with setting my hook and I get further out on my fingers. Um, also in the world of shooting bare bow with no triggers, no clicker, no, you know, having to deal with target panic, literally head to head, the further you get out on your fingers, the more panicky you get in bare bow. It absolutely happens. I've seen it a million times and you do have, you give up a little bit of the, um, what's the word you, you, you because in barebo we're not pulling through a clicker we're not expanding through a clicker the same it's a little bit more of a hold it's actually if you're drawing correctly and you're not losing back tension because you see a lot of barebo shooters come back and they try to do they end up coming in and they lose that back tension but if you're <laughs> continuing to build that pressure and you get to that 100 percent and hold that 100 percent, like brady says in the uh shoot like me video he's like because of the ratio of movement, I'm not, I'm not pulling. Well, there's no slippage happening. You really have to have a good hook. That's just what I find in barebow. It is different than the Olympic recurve for that reason. Um, and also the smacking of the nose. I hear people say it all the time. Oh, I all of a sudden start hitting my nose, but then they're like, well, I want to get further out on my fingers because it gives me a cleaner release. I don't know if that's okay. So I got to interject. Yeah, so go Fred, ahead. Go ahead. You, said, you said a key word there. You go deeper. A little. Yeah. Okay. And, but that's the direction to go. I don't oh, care yeah, if you're yeah. barebow recurve yeah. or compound to go deeper yeah. is better. And how I'll demonstrate that if it's a, release shooter, like a handheld release shooter, as Larry just said, I'll have them put the release in their hand and I'll pretend it's this pin. Mm -hmm. And I'll grab right up here where the head is, where the, the jaw is gonna hook. Mm -hmm. And I'll have them hold it right here against this bone and I'll pull. And they just notice how much resistance they have. Then I'll have them put it out here where they wanna hold it on their fingertips yeah. and pull. And you are automatically going to gauge in here. Now, when I first started, I was compound with fingers. And I thought too, oh, out on my fingertips, yeah. better release. Till the day I was at full draw at nationals or sectional sectionals. And there was a major <laughs> pop. I snapped the tendon in my arm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was not shooting for months. So, and you can demonstrate this easily, even if you have them get a piece of string or if you're standing on a stretch band but when you are on the fingertips yep the amount of engagement of the forearm mm -hmm. is huge yeah the deeper you go the more relaxing in the forearm and the biceps and in fact the cleaner the release agreed um when you do the exercise where oh my stretch bands are I'll use this flat one. No, here's one. If you're, if you imagine that you're standing on a stretch band, but even with this, if you're deeper, when you let go, your fingers almost snap back. Yeah. But when you're out here on the fingertips, your chances of coming out in a pluck are higher. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah. To go toward the fingertips is counterintuitive. It is not a cleaner yeah. release at Use all. More muscle. You're right. using more forearm and muscle, and it is not a clean release at all. Little young kids that have trouble, I'll even get them closer to the second joint. And it's still, a, even though there's that much on there, because there's less tension in here, yep. when they let go of that tension, their fingers just push out of the way. Yep. The string is just pushing them out. So always go deeper, never go shallow. Yep. So for me, what it looks like just, and that's, it's again, this is me and it's just behind the first joint on the top finger um, in roughly in uh, the second finger in or near the joint of the second finger. And then the last one is still is actually pretty close to the same as on the pad. Um, but in, again, you have to understand a huge proponent of that too. I don't want to hit my nose 
I don't want to hit my nose. It hurts. It just, it's becomes a, it means that I'm tipping my head in real far. You know, it's an indicator for me that my form isn't correct. Um, there's some people that they do it, but they also have like really high anchors or they anchor in real deep or they anchor real forward and they end up bringing their nose in front of the string. I know there's that famous picture of uh, Katniss Everdeen that floats around Google every once in a while or on social media where they show like her taking her nose off because of the way they took the picture. You know, it, I like I love that you pointed that out, Linda. Deeper is definitely better. Um, oh, yeah. And it's cleaner despite popular mm -hmm. belief. It's um, despite popular belief, it is a cleaner release. Yes, it's counterintuitive. But you get out on your fingertips. It's very compound with the release or finger shooters. You don't you do not want to go toward your fingertips. Yeah. And just to, I'm going to backtrack a little bit toward the compound. That doesn't mean deeper this way. No, that just means you're you're a little bit deeper, still maintaining the flat, the flat back. Of right. the you, you're just getting closer to this knuckle. Yeah. Yeah. Up here, this knuckle and yep. further away from the fingertip knuckle. Yep. And I, the analogy I've used with shooters before is if you're carrying a five gallon bucket of rocks, you're not carrying it on your fingertips. You're carrying it with with a hook, you know, and you're going to carry it that way. And the, And when you do have it straight, there is a natural curvature to that relaxed position of of the wrist, the forearm and the hand. It just happens, you know. But we're setting all those. We're so we're setting those things, the release hand, the hook, the bare bow hook, whatever it is, we're doing that first, then we're moving into the grip, which we talked about kind of initially, we opened up talking about hand position, but it is super super important that you're paying mind to setting the release, the hook, then setting the grip and that process but then what do we have to do after we set our grip what do we have what, what you know what do we do we have to recheck it right a lot mm. of people don't do that they skip that step they skip that step i know in recurve it really shouldn't change but we do go back and check the release hand again after we set the grip right larry we actually finish the set i should say well i with yeah with the uh, release aid yes you yeah. you have to finish setting the release hand, flatten out the knuckles, get the wrist near straight. Before yeah. you raise to draw. Right, right. And if you do that correctly, you shouldn't have to change those hands after that. Right. Getting, getting this hand relaxed, I would guess is, is the tough part. Relaxed as soon as you touch and Keep it relaxed while you raise. Keep it relaxed while you draw. Yeah. Tough. Perfect. Good stuff. Um, anybody that's viewing or we had a few people that logged in, if you guys would like to ask some questions, by all means, do so. Um, you can see that some people put in where they were from and what kind of archer they were shooting. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about this stuff, pop them in the chat. Uh, in the meantime, uh, anything else you guys want to touch on when it comes to um, this topic or want to? Well, well, we've covered it pretty well. Obviously, there's um, individual application, and that's that's why you take a coaching course, right. <laughs> or you, you take a course for coaching on on shooting form, and we work with individuals then to place their hand on the bow correctly, to get their release hand positioned correctly. And, you know, that's the purpose of taking the course. Right. Or, you know, having one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you happen to have a coach, uh, that's why you visit them and spend time with them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and taking, pursuing a, a higher level of coaching as yourself, if you're a coach working with shooters, trying to learn from other coaches, or if you're a competitor taking like our form class or going to a seminar or something, but at least like, you know, you have to pay attention to these things. And I guess in the bow hunting world, sometimes some of these things are overlooked in the general population, like the recreational shooters and just hunters. And, you know, it's, I guess the idea there is to explain is, we're, we're talking about a consistency that is able to hit the X 60 times in a row. Like that's the pursuit of 
of consistency, not just, you know, pie plate accuracy. That's not what we're doing here. And, you know, sometimes in the bow hunting world, I think that's way overlooked because, you know, people are set up at, uh, you know, a big box store outdoor shop. They send them out with a bow and, oh, I'm going to go buy a, a, a thumb button. And then before you know it, their draw length is, is too long, but they're curling their hand up to try to get into a draw length. And, you know, there's just, there's, there's a lot to go, a lot more that goes into us. You know, it's hard to have proper release technique if your draw length is an inch and a half too long, you know, and there's just, there's so many things that go into it, but that's way beyond the topic of what we're having. We're talking about yeah. today. Yeah. I saw a question pop up. Hi, Frank, not sure you're aware. Comments on FB about know how to join the meeting. Hey, that's okay. I appreciate it, Graham. Um, they should probably, uh, maybe just look at the event because it's pretty well laid out there and they can go back and watch it over again. So it's no big deal, but I appreciate you, uh, you, you providing us that information. Um, I guess that's about it for today. That was a, we did really well. It was only like a mm -hmm. even 35 minute discussion. <laughs> yeah. We definitely could go into further detail, but so, well, well, you know, that's what the courses are for. Um, you know, stop in over at the page and, and sign up for the, the IAI Archery Forum course with Coach Larry and Coach Linda. We did bump that back just because enrollment was down. We need at least like eight people. So go sign up for that course, people. You want to work with two of the, the best coaches around. This is your opportunity. Um, and then we're going to, we keep, keep talking about it. I'm trying to get Coach Linda to talk about her coaching cues. We're going to record that. One of these days, it's going to happen. Um, we need to set a time to talk about that. This yes, week. yes, we can do that maybe later today or just on Facebook Messenger is fine. Um, but we're going we're gonna to get that one going. And um, I, think, uh, I think that's it for the time being. Just make sure you guys check out our Facebook page for updates. And you guys can watch this later and watch it back again on YouTube. All right? Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Thanks Larry, for joining us. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a good day.